The inspiration for today's project is a chair I came across in the Milwaukee Art Museum designed by Paul Frankel. Frankel's designs incorporated a lot of skyscraper motifs, which have no interest for me. What did interest me about the chair was that the back and sides of the chair were all splayed out from one another, and because the front was wider than the back, it meant the miters at the back of the chair involved compound angles. I've never done compound angles. Now, I don't need any unusual chairs in my house. My wife would say I don't have a need for any additional normal chairs either. But what I do need is a challenge, and trying to create a chair with compound miters was exactly the challenge I was looking for. The chair in the Milwaukee Art Museum looked like it was made out of solid wood, which I have, but because I was doing this project as an experiment, I wasn't going to waste a lot of time surfacing some good material for something that could turn out to be a disaster. This is where the plywood came in. The plywood is some mid-grade radiata pine from a big box store, and like I said, I wouldn't call it heirloom quality, but if it did turn out terribly, I wouldn't feel uptight about losing it. Obviously, step one is breaking down the material into rough size using the circular saw and those sorts of things. Next was getting a sled together that I could then use to cut the pieces down to final sizes.
Working out the angles on this one was a little bit tedious, but I think it came out well. Obviously, this is not a project that I had any sort of written plan for, other than I had a rough idea of the exterior dimensions for the chair from another museum's website, which means I was kind of winging it as I went along. In fact, let's just say that's the theme of this particular project, winging it. Cutting the compound miters was done in the most rudimentary way possible, which is that I simply cut a wedge that seemed about right to prop the boards up off the sled while I angled the pieces away from the blade and then angled the blade away from the pieces. I'm not sure I could ever really explain that well to anybody, but it made sense to me at the time, and the miters actually turned out pretty good. Now, as I said, a lot of the parts of this chair came together by eye, and their final look just sort of seemed dictated by what looked right. This includes shaping the seat. So at this point, the chair is functionally done. I could screw it together, and yeah, it would look like just four old pieces of plywood joined together, but it would also be a chair. But it didn't quite seem like I was finished in my mind, uh, which is why I decided to take some steps to give it some visual interest and help reduce the weight. This started with cutting out these weird curves in all the surfaces. It also meant I would have to work out some arms and some feet for it, but those will be dealt with later. Now gluing up a piece like this with all its varied angles was not going to be straightforward, which is where the specialty calls came in. Uh, I made these with some glued together scrap plywood from other projects and they actually work surprisingly well. It also helped that I could screw the pieces together to hold them in place. Uh, something I did because I knew I was gonna replace the screws with dowels anyway, and then these screw holes would just disappear.
So after I doweled the seat in, I needed to cut some splines to hold those angles together. And one of the fun aspects of this project uh, was making the sled to cut those splines with the router. And the reason I needed splines is pretty obvious. Glue alone on those surfaces isn't going to be strong enough to hold them. So specialty sled, router, splines, there you go. And the reason the sled was special is just because those angles kind of fall away from one another and you got to cut one side of the sled at a slightly different angle than the other side of the sled in order to just kind of keep it working uh, relatively straight to itself. And I also know a lot of people are not fans of splines, but I actually happen to like the look of them and try to include them in any project where possible. So here we come to the process of creating the feet and handrails of the chair. These were made primarily from cedar fence boards, but also a length of cedar dimensional lumber. And as you can see, I turned these into a sort of sandwich that would slide over the top and bottom of the chair, which then required a good amount of fiddling to get them all to sit right to one another. Again, the angles were not working with me in a lot of instances. Here you can see that I'm doing some shaping of the front of the armrest of the chair. I just kind of freehanded some curves on there. I mean, I drew them out, but I also freehanded them a little bit. Not in love with them, but they work okay and they feel okay on the hand. So there was a lot of fine tuning of the hand rests or the arm rests and the feet to get them to fit together. And even with all the fiddling around and all the other stuff that went into it, uh, I don't think I ever really got it great. I got it good enough, but it's not something that's going to win any awards.
Now, if you look close, you'll see that the arms have a rounded end and the feet have some softened angles on them. I think if I were doing it again, I would do the angles on both the arms and the feet. Uh, the only reason I tried something different was, again, this was an experiment. Unfortunately, I didn't hit record when I was finishing this thing, uh, which I finished with three coats of some semi-gloss oil-based poly from Minwax. First coat went on heavy. I thinned the others successively with mineral spirits as I added those to get as good of a appearance as you're going to get on what is essentially uh, an experiment. In the end, my takeaway from the chair is it came together well enough. It is not perfect, it's not an heirloom, and it's riddled with cosmetic imperfections I glossed over for this video because as an experiment, they kind of didn't matter. And on those terms, this project was a success, even if I have no idea what I'm going to do with this chair. But sometimes you just build something to build it, and that's what this one was. Anyway, on to the next one.